A man's personality and character is exuded through his haircut. Your image is important. Our high-end services range from a traditional haircut and shave to gray blending, beard shaping, and unwanted hair removal. Located at 425 Victoria Avenue East, book your appointment online now at modernmen.ca or call Tammy, 306-522-4111. Modern Men, a haircut for the modern man. Hello, I'm Sean McNall, owner of TG Marketing. We are a promotional product company located in Regina, Saskatchewan. Originally founded by Tom G. McNall in 1985, we are now in our 35th year of business. My brother Ryan and I, along with our great staff, have carried the torch since Tom retired in 2011. For those of you who don't know what we do, we sell items with a company's logo on it like clothing, pens, phone chargers, Bluetooth speakers. The list of products available is endless. Our products are a great form of advertising. Whether you want to give a gift to a valued client or show your appreciation to your staff, we have a friendly team that can help find the right product for your needs. The key to our success has been our customer service and our vast knowledge of products in our industry. We ask the right questions to get you in line with the proper product for the project you are working on. Stop by 1046 Winnipeg Street and view our showroom. Get some ideas for that next promotion you're working on. Let's make your business what everyone's talking about. the old me that for 40 years Darren I was a kamikaze the fact that I'm alive is a miracle how about that I've ridden steers jumped off cliffs been shot and been shot at 
and I survived it all. This is the Rod Peterson Show. It is. Hello, Canada and Canadian uh, football fans, Canadian sports fans around the world. Don't mind rude me. I'm just sharing this show in all the various bunch of Facebook groups. Here we go. It's a Flame Tech Football Friday. No, not any breaking news yet today, but there might be. There might be. This is episode number 411 of Canada's uh, daytime sports talk show. RP here, Moose DuPont there. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. That's good. Yeah, you? You ready to talk some football? Let's do it. Well, this is the warm-up for the Fort Season Sports Palace. Come in and warm up. You're home for the NFL. And uh, on this Flame Tech Football Friday, we got some big guests for you. John Frenzy's here. He's on the sponsor's couch, which is still relatively empty because of COVID. Yeah. Okay. We were really getting something going there with sponsors rolling in here and watching in the live audience. And then the a virus just wiped it up. Yeah. But Lynch is there, and he looks very comfortable. Uh, Tori Gurley will be with us, our NFL insider in week one. uh, Sorry, in hour one. And of the Green Bay Packers, wide receiver Reggie Begleton of CFL fame as well with the Calgary Stampeders. And the newest member of the Toronto Argonauts, Martavius Bryant, will be joining us. Did you know that, Frenzy? No. Martavius Bryant coming on the program today. Real nice work. Real beauty, Clark. Lining up guests here again today. But let's jump into the quick six show topics, please, because they don't all pertain to football, but a lot of them do. Um, Point one, maybe you could announce this, Stoops. You can be the PR guy. Super Bowl 55, it hasn't changed. The Chiefs are favored by 3.5 over Tampa, which surprises me a little because it's in Tampa. We can talk about that. But we've got Super Bowl coverage all next week. Can you announce... The title sponsor of it? Yeah, Original 16. Woohoo! Our title sponsor for <laughs> Super, Super Bowl, Bowl coverage. coverage. All week long, so that'll be great. Looking forward to it. But the line's not bad. The Chiefs obviously favored, even on the road. I mean, the way they played in the only matchup between the two teams all year. I mean, Tyree Kill had 200 yards receiving in the first quarter of that football game. It's a three-point game. Tampa came back, made it close. Um, so it'll be, it'll be really interesting. It's a... It's a tough one. I saw this morning that uh, in Vegas there was a $2.3 million bet placed on the Bucks, which would net a $2 million winning. So that's the wow. big bet that came in over the uh, last 20. Do you know hours. the guy? Uh, not personally. He's not, <laughs> he's not in my phone contacts, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, Great Western Super Bowl coverage here on the RP Show next week. And we'll have NFL personalities each and every day beginning Monday. Shoot, we got a couple today, as I just mentioned. Three of them, actually. Uh, So point two as we move on from that. So the Houston Texans have hired a new head coach, Cully. And that did not change Deshaun Watson's mind. He officially asked for a trade yesterday and now the question is where will the Houston Texans ship this guy like he wants out what happened to Desha- who hurt him because you think it's Bill O'Brien but he's gone and Deshaun Watson still wants out I mean we've got resident Texans fans who watch this show every day can you guys tell me what I'm missing here with Deshaun Watson But the question now is, where will he go? I was on TSN 1290 radio this morning in Winnipeg, and that was the question that one of the ones that came up with Jim Toth, and I'm sticking with the Jacksonville Jaguars because the word at the Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama, my football guys are telling me all they're talking about down there is Matt Stafford going to the Cowboys. He's a Dallas kid. I know. Like Old women talk about old men. Old men talk about the weather. And football people talk about this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know? So, I will say Jacksonville. Where do you think Deshaun Watson goes? Uh, I think he goes to the Jets or the Dolphins. That's who is on his list. I, I, I just think, you know, that's that's where he'll end up. The Dolphins or the Jaguars one's interesting. That's what Adam Schefter proposed. He didn't say, but he's, he didn't say it was happening. But he said, interesting. Would you trade Deshaun Watson to Jacksonville for the number one pick? To be uh, Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. And it was back and forth, obviously. But you get a 25-year-old quarterback in his prime, one of the top you know, five quarterbacks in the entire NFL, or you get a number one pick who will, who could, if he pans out, will be a top five quarterback, but there's a chance that he won't. So take the sure thing. I think so. Interesting. So Don McNeil, right on cue, Texans fan living in central Ontario says ownership in Houston is, and has always been a disaster. 
Well, Deshaun Watson's proven he's a dynamic quarterback, but he hasn't proven necessarily the ability to win. Him wanting out might be part of the problem. Now, Robin and Prince Albert says maybe that Watt rant was directed toward Watson. Remember J.J. Watt a few weeks ago at the end of a game because they missed the playoffs. It was a regular season game saying guys here don't care enough. Maybe it was directed at Deshaun Watson. They got big problems there. But I'll, I'll go back for a second. Look at Connor McDavid said the other day, nobody would blame him if he wanted out of what's going on in Edmonton. I've got more and more and more respect for that kid because he's at the podium again last night. They could have just replayed the film from Tuesday's news conference with the loss at the Jets. I don't know if you saw it, but he looks so deflated, so down. And you see all these other players just in other sports, but no less talented, wanting out of bad programs. Is that just the difference between hockey and football? No, I don't think so. I think it may be overall, but you want, you want people in your organization who want to be part of the solution, right? You want Deshaun Watson, your star quarterback, to be the guy saying, look, at this is broken, but I'm going to fix it. I'm going to lead the locker room, work with, you know what I mean? You want people in there to try and fix it, not guys that just run away as soon as there's an issue. Right? As soon as it's not great and it's not good, I'm going to ask to go somewhere where it is good instead of being the guy leading the way trying to build good culture. Right? Yes. Well, you don't know what's going on in a dressing room. You don't. And when you do find out, it's like an athletic insider column or something, but it's rare. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on. We go by what we see from the outside. I like this one from viewer Greg Clevgard. He says, ask Boomer. Boomer Esiason, people just aren't letting that go. Clark, have you asked him to come on the show, Boomer Esiason? Not yet. We're going to put out a line in the water and see if Boomer Esiason will come on and talk about all these things. Right? We should. But it just seems like we, Boomer Esiason seems to hate the CFL. What happened to Boomer Esiason? Who hurt him? Did he come to Canada and get punted out of the brass rail? I'm like, sure. what? Who hurt you, Boomer? I don't remember all of his career. I'm like, did he, did he take a big loss to Doug Flutie or Warren Moon Apparently somewhere? Apparently they're buddies. Like, I'm trying to think of, like, the timelines of when he was He playing. seems to hate the CFL. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Who hurt you, Boomer? I've tagged him in several tweets and have been, not been acknowledged at all. Not that that's rare. But Pat McAfee's acknowledged this. Spitting Chicklets has acknowledged this. Who hurt you, Boomer? Moving on, uh, point four. We won't spend a lot of time on this. We'll wait until Frenzy comes in. The Edmonton football head coach. Let's talk about who it's going to be. You notice that I got all hot and bothered Monday, Tuesday, and then whoosh, yeah. just went away. So we'll spend more time with Frenzy because he wants to talk about that. Point four, Thursday, NHL leftovers. 13 games last night. It was supposed to be 14, but the St. Louis-Vegas game was postponed. Um, I don't know where you want to start. I could go down to my five leftovers that I tweeted this morning that's getting a lot of reaction. Uh, the Leafs are number one overall still. They won in Edmonton, but who doesn't? But good for them. Good on them. Yeah. You know what? It was a... It was a fun hockey game because of all the scoring. Zingle, zingle, tie, they're up, tie. They're. So it was a fun game. And I actually, in that third period, felt a lot of suspense. I didn't know how it was going to end. So that was really great. The penalties ba like slowed it down. A lot of penalties. A lot of penalties, especially in that third period. It slowed the game right down. But I thought it was fine. I thought it was pretty good. Um, so pretty happy overall with, with that one. And uh, in the New York game, is Lafreniere not a bust now that he scored in overtime? Mm -hmm. Looked pretty good getting his first goal there. But no, the Leafs-Oilers game was it was fun. I'm going to my Twitter feed. Here, here were my leftovers. Mm -hmm. How long will the Leafs be number one overall? The Capitals are winning without Ovi. Honestly, I was looking at the score sheet last night going, where's Ovi? And then I'm like, oh, yeah. He's on COVID suspension. They're still winning. Yeah. They're very good. They are very good. They haven't lost in regulation. Uh, point three, when does Calgary become concerned? They've lost three in a row. I wouldn't think they would yet. But, well, they probably are. I'm not sure they should yet. Okay, I don't know why Markstrom didn't play last night. Point four, the Kachuk brothers equal the Hart brothers. I was trying to find some brother duo that, were, that liked to fight. 
Yeah. And a, who are those YouTube stars right now that are fighting on uh, the Pauls? Yeah, maybe Jake that would Logan be Paul. They're like the Pauls, but nobody would get that if I said that. Yeah, no. Westwood really liked on Winnipeg Radio this morning that I compared them to Brett and Owen Hart. Because if you noticed last night, both Kachucks were chucking the knuckles. You got Keith. It's like the Hart Foundation. <laughs> the exactly. Tachuk Foundation. The we got to get a name. It's the, the Tachuk. Kachuk Foundation. Exactly. So I last night, if you watched the Ottawa and the Flames, both Kachucks were chucking the knuckles last night. And I'm like, what, what, what's you guys' game supposed to be? Like, I get, I think Matthew is the heart and soul of the Flames, and I don't know enough about the Senators, but I, if Brady is, that would probably be a good thing for the Sens. But do you want them in the penalty box doing that kind of thing, or do you want them scoring, or do you care if you're their coach? As long as you're winning games. If you're not winning games, now we got problems. Well, neither, which neither is one. Happening. Yeah, <laughs> neither one is. Um, and point five, the orders slipped out of a playoff spot last night, if you noticed, uh, but it's only week two. Those were my five leftovers from last night. And where this is catching on is Habs fans now wrote and said, when's Rod going to talk about the Habs? Well, probably when something bad happens with him, because I tend to point out the negative, I, I, and I apologize for that. I hate the fact that I watch hockey critically. I hate it. I do know. you? I Sometimes I do, but it, it, I know. When, and when that happens, I'm like, this isn't fun. This isn't why I want to watch no. the game, just to be that guy. I'm going to put on a – that's when you put on Netflix and just be like, look it, i got to check out. It's, um, it's hard. It's like I want to just put my feet up and watch the game, and I might – that might last for five, ten seconds, and all of a sudden you're dissecting. And st- I don't. Oh, but how do you break yourself of that? I know, I know, and I'm dissecting the broadcast. I'm dissecting the, you know, the camera. Well, angles. Most times, oh, I don't right. even listen to the broadcast. My wife quite often says, "Did he just say that, or did she say that?" What? I wasn't listening. But that's just me. Yeah. Um, point five: The Western Hockey League returned to play. A lot of people talking about this. Uh, it did come a little out of the blue. While we knew the WHL and Junior A Leagues had been dealing with the governments, all of a sudden, boom, an announcement that the Alberta government has said, yes, you Alberta teams can start playing beginning February 26. Like confetti in the air. <sighs> I feel like that's just another hurdle cleared and they move on. But it's not easy for anybody. Not easy for anybody. I was just talking to a guy the other day that's going to Hawaii. He talked about all the checks he's got to get one in Saskatoon tests one in Saskatoon then another in San Francisco and then another one once they land in Hawaii $250 per test I don't think it's any cheaper for a hockey team or a football team so these junior leagues it's going to be very expensive they're doing it for the players I've been told that some teams don't want to play they've gone on notice they had a vote right why that's your thing I don't know what to say because I'm hearing things from right in those meetings of what's going on, but I'm reporting very little of it because nobody else is reporting any of it. I'm like, are we supposed to be quiet here? I know. Or does nobody else know these things? I'm just not going to say anything. But I, I heard who two of the teams were that didn't want to play, and the rest of the teams were like, well, have a nice winter. We're playing. Right? And good for them, by the way. So, again, it's positive news, but not much else is known. And then the obvious question is, okay, so Alberta's playing. Awesome, Alberta. What about BC? What about Saskatchewan? What about Manitoba? I believe here in the rectangle, we're good to go. We're ready. We're waiting on Manitoba, who's got strict, strict, strict regulations on COVID, which, by the way, is fine. Do what you're going to do, but we're probably going to play. Yeah, I I would hope that Saskatchewan will follow suit here pretty soon. Um, I can imagine that the plan's not a whole lot different than what's going on in Alberta or what was presented in Alberta. And a little bit easier to travel around. And so I'm, I'm all for it. I can't wait. I'm excited. Yeah. But February 26th is it's closer than we think, but it's yeah. still a little ways away. And things can change. But it's opt- a reason for optimism. Well, we're hearing of players arriving in town and starting their self-quarantine of certain teams. I just don't know how much we're allowed to say. Larry Dye in Medicine Hat says, that's your job to break it down, Rod. No, I don't think it is. I think my job is to sit here and have coffee every day and talk about the games. That's all. I'm not the analyst. I'm not Kelly Rudy. I'm not Louis DeBrusque. That's their job. I would like to break myself of that habit. That's all. But I don't know that you ever can. I didn't have a point six. Do you have a point six? No, do you want me to have a point six? Yeah. I could come up with yeah. a point six. I guess we do have breaking news and I sh- from yesterday. Is it still breaking if it's yesterday? 
We're going beginning February 6th. The Rod Peterson Show is going to Access Now Television. Uh, Access and I have had a wonderful 25-year relationship, and it continues with the RP Show going to Access Now. And how many communities across the Saskatchewan? Oh, man. I think it's 80. Yeah. 80 communities across this fine province will be carrying the Rod Peterson Show on Saturdays and Sundays at noon, beginning February the 6th. That's next weekend. Yeah. So that Super that is exciting. a 0.6. That's a pretty good one, too. That's very exciting. And just on the footnote of that, we should remind everybody of Monday's show change, which, you know, coincides with us moving to two hours on national television uh, starting at noon Eastern every day. So no longer will the show um, it won't be on right now. It'll start at noon Eastern will be hour one of the program. Yep. So you can uh, get ready for that noon Eastern nine Pacific all year round. Um, so that's really exciting. I told Lynch today, this is the last day that I'm picking you up at nine, Lynch. Next Friday, we'll be, I'll be picking you up at 10. This is the greatest time slot in broadcasting, just so you know. Yeah. 11 to 1, and then once the time change, it'll be 10 to 12. I can handle it quite nicely. So there's the quick six show topics. The rock star of the day yesterday, interestingly enough, was Jason Tatarnik, the head coach and general manager of the Estevan Bruins. A lot of revelations revealed by him yesterday, not the least of which is he coached former Coyotes GM John Chaika in junior. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love those sports connections. I love them. There's always six degrees of separation so yeah, in sports. It's like two or three yeah, I know, degrees. right? Yeah. John Frenzy in the bunker next. Thanks, Dupes. We'll see you a little later. Yeah, see you guys. This has been the warm-up for the Four Seasons Sports Palace. Come in and warm up at the Four Seasons. Your home for the NFL. And uh, we'll be right back. You're watching on Game Plus TV. I got to get this right. Ah, it's all good. There we go. Facebook Live, YouTube Live, and listen live at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rental. Video. Video production. Event, event management. No further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. Hey, it's Warren Dean. I understand more than anyone how changing weather affects your day, and that's no different for your vehicle. That's why I look to the experts at Suds Full Service Car Wash. They have a wide range of exterior washes, including Lava Shield with towel dry. Looking good, Natalie and Kirby. And don't forget their famous Suds Ultimate. Thoroughly cleans the interior of your car. Open Monday to Saturday, no appointment necessary. Head to Suds Full Service Car Wash today, where they treat you like family. Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions is Saskatchewan's only full-service supply chain company. Strategic sourcing, PO creation, and order expediting, VMI and vending solutions, and free delivery are just a few of the supply chain services we provide. If your company needs it, Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions can get it for you. Price, quality, service, Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions is helping Saskatchewan companies buy better. Look like the pros. Shop Ultimate Fan Zone. NHL, NFL, MLB, CFL, NBA, and more. We have something for every sports fan. Autograph jerseys, prints, jersey stitching, custom framing, and collectibles. UFZ is your one-stop sports store offering fans official team gear. Check out Saskatchewan's Man Cave Corner on River and Main, downtown Moose Jaw, or visit us online at ultimatefanzone.ca. Built by fans for the fans. There's something for everyone at the Mad Greek Eatery. Delicious Greek dishes, pizza, lasagna, pastas, soups, salads, and much more. The Mad Greek Eatery brings the best authentic Greek cuisine right to you. Available for licensed dining, events, delivery, and takeout. For the best taste and huge portions, there is only one place. Visit the Mad Greek Eatery, downtown Moose Jaw. Call for takeout and delivery today. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. 
Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. All right, welcome back, uh, everybody. Flame Tech Football Friday continues. Flame Tech is your industry leader in combustion services. Frenzy, you're going to need your headphones for this interview, okay? I believe they're turned on. John Frenzy's appearances are for Wheaton Kia, as are Tory Gurley. And our NFL insider joins us today. Lynch has a list of questions for you, Tori. So before I turn you loose on him, Tori, let's let's start with the Deshaun Watson situation. They've hired their new coach, and he still wants out. It's the number one story in this NFL. What do you know about it? He's just fed up. You know, over many years, he's watched guys like Jadavian Clowney. He's watched DeAndre Hopkins. He's watched... Um, his first round left tackle. All these guys have been shipped on to other places, and it's just he and J.J. Watt. And as of now, J.J. Watt is still a – he's now more a, of a ambassador than a football player. Uh, it's, he's not the same guy because of injury, but he's still great for the community, and I think that's the only reason why J.J. is still on the roster. But if you look around, he just doesn't have enough, enough help. So Deshaun is looking around in the NFL. He sees that Tom Brady was able to get with Tampa and had the success he had in the first year with having all the weapons. And he just wants to be in a situation where he can go out and win football games. And that's something they're not doing in Houston right now. I'm on record as thinking he'll go to Jacksonville for that number one overall pick. Lynch, you think, think about where you think Deshaun Watson's going to go. Where do you think he's going to go, Tori? Uh, I think a great fit would be anywhere that ha that needs a quarterback. So I would say San Francisco. Uh, they're looking for a long-term quarterback. Uh, Chicago <laughs> easily could use them. So uh, yeah, I like those two teams, or even the Dallas Cowboys. You know, and, and here's the thing about Dak Prescott. You know, everyone felt sorry for him uh, when Dak was injured, but now if you talk about bringing in a guy of a Deshaun Watson, now you're not even thinking about Dak Prescott, Dak Prescott anymore. And, and, and that's the funny thing about sports. But, um, you know, I, what, whatever situation he goes to, I'm pulling for him because the guy is just a winner. Uh, I'm sorry. The San Francisco 49ers were taken to the Super Bowl by Jimmy Garoppolo. Right. <laughs> right. They moved on. Is Jimmy Garoppolo's time done with the 49ers? I know he had injury problems this year. But, dude, does, I'm I hearing, think, I'm hearing the same things, too. They're saying Stafford to the 49ers. Like, I think it I, is. I thought they had a quarterback. I think it no, is. most definitely. Uh, uh, Kyle Shanahan is not comfortable with Jimmy G at quarterback. Um, I, I, I hate to place the blame on one person when it comes to a Super Bowl, but if he would have played at a higher level, the uh, Kansas City Chiefs would, would not have won that game. Uh, it was up to Jimmy G to make the throws, and he easily could have got it done, and he couldn't. And that's the reason why they didn't win the Super Bowl. You know, the defense did give up a huge play. But the offense had a few opportunities to keep their foot on the gas, and they just couldn't do it. And you just you need a playmaker. You need someone that's dynamic. And just because you know you were able to get a team to a Super Bowl, you got to be able to win it. And that's the same thing with Jared Goff. You know, just a couple of years ago, the Patriots and the Rams were in the Super Bowl, and now uh, Sean McVay is trying to get off that bad contract that he gave Goff. Wow. Okay. Both. John Frenzy and Tori Gurley, two guys brought to you by Wheaton Kia, and here they go. Frenzy? Okay, no. I got to look at Shaquille Barrett, John Pierre Paul, two of the best defensive ends in football with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They got to, I think, Tori, play the game of their life if Tampa Bay is going to beat the Kansas City Chiefs in a week and a half. How do you feel about that? 
I still don't think that's enough. Uh, the biggest problem that Tampa Bay Buccaneers have is that their secondary is extremely young. And Tyreek Hill in the first half had over 200 yards the first time they played. And that's not going to change. And if you try to double up on Tyreek, now you have to worry about Travis Kelsey. If you double up on Travis Kelsey, now you have to worry about Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins, McCole, Hart McCole Hartman, and the list goes on and on. So um, I guess the best way to try to describe the Kansas City Chiefs is that they are a juggernaut. And we still haven't talked about Patrick Mahomes playing at a high level. You know, we're just talking about the skilled players, but with him being the quarterback and the decision maker of dispersing the ball around, honestly, the only way they can win that game is if they try to knock him out. And I hate to say that, but that is it. You know, but if he plays, Tom Brady, they don't have the offense to keep up. You know, and, and something you can't do is try to hold the ball because if you don't capitalize with touchdowns, that's something that. Uh, the Chiefs can get on the other end. They can score touchdowns in one or two plays. So um, I, I just think it's a bad matchup. Travis Kelsey, they're uh, tight end there, 6'4", uh, 260 pounds, sensational football player. The feeling is the Kansas City Chiefs offense goes through Kelsey. Would you go along with that? Absolutely. Because the most – the most, important, the most important part of the field that every defensive coordinator tries to protect is the middle. And with Travis Kelsey always being that tight end and just roaming the middle of the field, who do you put on? You know, he's too athletic for a linebacker, but he's too strong for a safety. And most safeties don't have the coverage skills to stay in front of a receiver because he ultimately he's a receiver with, with the ability to block. So it's just a bad matchup no matter how you – shape, cut it, or try to describe it. It's just, he, he's a nightmare. He, he's a mismatch, and that puts a stress on any and every defensive coordinator and defense in the league. From, from a viewer, Craig in Toronto, Craig Campbell says, Tori, how good can Martavis Bryant be for the Argos, assuming he is really committed and understands the level of play and faster pace of the game? I mean, the guy played at a high level in, in the National Football League, but with him, it's all going to be about maturity. Um, I, I've seen him not too long ago in Las Vegas, and you know I just you know I hope he can continue to just stay on the right path because it's, it's, his substance abuse really has hindered him, and, and it's the reason why he's in the Canadian Football League. You know, if if he was walking a straight line, I mean this guy could be arguably a top ten receiver in, in a National Football League. So it's not the talent; it's just hoping he can stay on top of uh, his personal. Uh, you know, the things he do in his personal time. Will he be content to play for the Argos after five or six games, though? Or will he start thinking he should be back in the NFL? Well, whenever someone gives you an opportunity to play and the game has been taken and has been pulled away from you, you should be grat You should really have gratitude towards it because uh, this thing doesn't stop for anyone. And Antonio Brown had to figure that out the hard way and Le'Veon Bell and whoever else who um, got in trouble and thought, you know, they were the NFL, and it just does not work that way. Uh, stars are being born every day, and every every week we find new guys to to cheer for because that's the National Football League. You, you get the best of the best. So whoever, if it's a Canadian Football League, if it's an arena team, if it's the National, if it's the NFL, if someone is going to pay you to play football, you should do your best to – have that gratitude, work hard, and and just kind of be aware of what's going on in life. You know, there's people out here that are without a job and, and homeless, and they wish somebody would, you know, pay them that type of money to go out and play a kid's game. So um, that's just something that you never can take for granted. When did you figure that out, Tori? Uh, it, I figured that out in high school. Um, and to be honest with you, uh, what happened – my mother would make me volunteer at different shelters. And it was amazing that there were kids who I went to high school with, I didn't know lived a certain life. And it just made me appreciate that, man, I'm an athlete. People look up to me and, you know, I, this easily could be someone else in my shoes. And from there, I've always had gratitude towards the game. And that's why I stepped away. I stepped away. I, well, I retired the way I did. You know, I, I woke up one morning. And it hit me. I was like, you know what? I don't. I was complaining about going to practice, 
And I always told myself, if I get to that, I just need to leave it alone because this is when this is a prime time for you to get hurt when you're out there and you're not playing a hundred percent. And I just, I don't want to test the football guys that way. So I was able to step away and, and appreciate the game for, for what it's done for me and, and my family. That uh, Kansas City Chief team has a couple of guys, or two or three guys, I think they're from another league, the quarterback Patrick Holmes and Tyree Hill, and the bad guy we just mentioned, uh, Travis uh, Stelke. I mean, these guys are in a league of their own. They're fantastic. How do you beat a team like that anyway? How, how do you have a chance? <laughs> just pray they don't show up. Pray they miss curfew or something like that. <laughs> um, that that's the only way. Uh, those guys are talented, and they can be beat. But I just don't think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers has what it takes to beat that team. Uh, as great as Tom Brady is, it would be better. This would be a a game better fitted if he was in New England and if he had the defensive players that he had in New England because they can match up. Um, if you guys. Um, you know, we if we, we, we kind of reflect on the season. The Kansas City Chiefs and New England Patriots played with Cam Newton, and the game was a, well without Cam Newton, and the game was a dog fight. So imagine if Cam was playing, and that's when the, the Patriots understand how to defend those guys. They can't shut them down, but they know how to, um, I guess, disrupt the timing of their offense, and that's something that the Buccaneers they're not great at doing. I, I watched. Uh, Devontae Adams and and Mar Marquez Val Valdez Scantling last week go up and down the field on. So if you if you struggle to stop two receivers, what's going to happen when you have to deal with those weapons of, of Kansas City? How much does home field play into this? It's exciting that it's the first time it's ever happened. What do you think the impact will be for the Bucks? I don't think it matters. Uh, it's I think roughly twenty two thousand people. And you're going to have just as many Chiefs fans as Bucks fans, you know, at the end of the day. So if it was a regular year, then I could see Tampa Bay having that home field advantage because, you know, it, it wouldn't shock me if the, the Bucks fans would try to, try to find a way to buy more tickets. But as of now, with it being 22,000, that's not going to affect these two quarterbacks, you know, on either side, if it's Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes, like that's, yeah, you know, that's that's like playing in a high school game to them. Uh, Tori, just lastly, uh, it is a Flame Tech Football Friday. Super Bowl aside, just to the CFL for a second. We've got Martavis Bryant coming on, as you know, next hour. Let's just say he lights it up and wants to get out of his contract to go to the NFL. But you can't because you have to sign a minimum two-year deal. You were sub subject to that. You know how it works. When the CFL comes back, and <clears throat> it will, who knows when, what kinds of things would you like to see changed? Is that one rookie imports signed just a one-year deal? You know, I, yeah, I will lean towards the player with that one year, and I, I think it's great for both parties. You know, because sometimes that's all you need. You know, you might like a guy like him. In two more years, he might be done with football just totally. You know, because most receivers, you can go get you a guy off the street. That's 21, 22 years old. You know, in two more years, I'm willing to bet that Martavis Bryant might be 30 years old. Not saying that he'll be, he can't play at a high level anymore, but for the amount of money you're going to pay him, you can just get a rookie and and, and deal with them that way. So um, that would be something I, I definitely would like. Also, probably add more uh, practice squad rosters um, and also – um, not play as many games in a week. You know, I remember playing like three games in a week and, you know, that was tough on the body. I understand the schedule and conflict or whatever, but uh, just be mindful of player safety, man. Allow these guys to rest up because it, playing in a football game, it takes a lot out of you. No kidding. All right, Tori. Well, next week we will be full on Super Bowl. I'm looking forward to that visit. Enjoy the weekend, sir. Appreciate the time. All right, you guys take care. Let's see anybody. Our NFL insider, Tory Gurley, and his appearance is presented by Wheaton Kia. Same story as John Frenzy. Where's my Wheaton Kia lid, by the way? It's got to be, we've got to put it, display it prominently out here. Right. Wheaton Kia, you can find him in North Regina at the corner of Albert and Avonhurst. We'll be back. Sports update, CFL report, viewer takeover. Lots to get to. You're watching the RP shows Flame Tech Football Friday on Game Plus TV, Twitter and Facebook, YouTube Live, and Listen Live at rodpeterson.com.
Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Comfort has always been something we as people strive for. It means that the places we live and work and that the people we care most about are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. While the world seems to be facing one challenge after another, our focus at FlameTech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. An Original 16 to fit your active lifestyle. Introducing Original 16 Canadian Ultra Lager. Just 80 calories and 2.5% alcohol. Taste without compromise. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Bronco Plumbing and Heating. Proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade-In Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program, or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 Ford F-150 Explorer or 2020 Ford Escape and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of thoroughly inspected pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. He's covering everything that matters to you. It's the Rod Peterson Show. Tune in live Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to noon to catch the show live and be a part of the action. Take control by commenting live and sharing the show with your friends. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now, back to the studio with Rob. Welcome back, everybody. Sports update. Brock Besser had two goals and an assist to lead the Vancouver Canucks to a 4-1 home win over the Ottawa Senators. It was the third time in four nights that the Canucks beat the Sens, who have lost seven in a row overall. Braden Holtby, the pride of Lloyd Minster, made 35 saves for the victory. Austin Matthews scored the winner on a third period power play as the Maple Leafs defeated the Orders 4-3. Jason Spezza with a goal and an assist. We Willie Nylander. And Wayne Simmons also scored for Toronto, who's won four straight. I see our good friend, uh, Captain, uh, what, are they, what does he call himself? Lieutenant Eric. Eric Holtz is real name. Lieutenant Eric, TSN 1260 Edmonton, putting on Twitter, what do the Oilers need to fix? <laughs> the replies... Oh, I can't believe it. Brendan Gallagher, Shea Weber, Josh Anderson, and Tyler Toffoli scored as Montreal defeated the Calgary Flames 4-2 in the Habs' home opener at Santa Rabel. NBA, Blake Griffin scored 23 points, and the Detroit Pistons took advantage of Anthony Davis's absence in a 107-92 victory over the Lakers. LeBron had 22 points and 10 assists. Remember when Blake Griffin was supposed to be the next big thing? Yeah. 
And then he went to Detroit. Yeah. That can do it for you. <laughs> In any sport almost, you know that? Football, basketball. Baseball. Now hockey, baseball. Yeah. Patrick Reed birdied his first three holes and finished with a bogey-free 8-under-64 for a share of the lead with Alex Noren after the first round of the Farmers Insurance Open. At Farmers, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. Roger Sloan of Merritt, B.C. is the top Canadian in San Diego after firing a 4-under-68. This sports update for Ballers Rec Room open today for lunch. You can find them right in the heart of the Dudney Strip. Ballers Rec Room, and for Red Bull Canada, Red Bull gives you wings. I will get to the CFL report in a moment, but that's you've had me reading here for moments on end. Let's bring in John Frenzy. We brought him here for a reason. You have a CFL writer's monologue you'd like to do. Go. Yeah, I hope they get uh, Ty, uh, Charleston Hughes. They got to get a guy like Charleston Hughes back in there. Just too good a football player is an exception. You're going to have to make an exception for him in your, in your calculations for your financing for this year because you've got to have him. Without him, that defensive line's in trouble. We don't have a defensive tackle, an American defensive tackle, now, as it stands right now. Well, I guess we do. We signed Freddie Bishop, but I don't think Freddie Bishop's in the category of the guys we had there last year. So it's something we've got to worry about. Uh, as far as the future of the league's concerned, I think there's no doubt about it in my mind and a friend of mine on the weekend that the the – Premiers of the provinces have to get the provinces involved. Province financing, like we have that for other things. I mean, that's what's going to save the club if the premiers will get in there and show they're interested and arrange for some kind of support from the province. Now, I don't know how much of a fan uh, Mo is, or Scott Mo, our present premier, but I know our past premier, uh, Brad Wall, if he were still there, there'd be money on the table right now, Rod, for the riders. Right, but you've been around the block a few times, Frenzy. I know. It's one thing to save the riders, but what's the point when the whole league's in trouble? And I'd like to know your take on this. You can talk about provincial funding. I've got a lot of time for that. And I think at the end of the day, I think at the end of the day, the provincial governments will step up. They have with the junior hockey teams. But when, what do you think about Scott Milanovic, the Edmonton coach, pocketing a reported $500,000 for Edmonton last year without even coaching a game? But the players have to get on their knees and beg for anything. And Charleston Hughes takes home $10,000. Scott Milanovic, $500,000. You're going to say, that's just the way things are. It's unfortunate. Nobody saw the pandemic coming. All of that, all of that's true. But if you're the government, you're going, we're supposed to write a check for that? Is that a fair question from the government's perspective? Oh, yeah, yeah. 500000 is a big salary. From, they got had to pay him $500,000 to get him. Here we go again. The Eskimos made an exception. They wanted a top coach to replace the guy they replaced him. And, uh, and so they paid him $500,000. he has got a lot of good points, uh, Scott Milanovic. He's been in this league before. Good player collegially when he played at uh, West Virginia. Pretty good coach in the National Football League. It was a real coup for the Eskimos to get a hold of him. So I can see why they paid him $500,000. I'm surprised you didn't say $700,000 because this guy's been around and he's a winner and he's a tough guy. Um, it's a tough situation. But you have to be prepared to make exceptions. When you have those hard and fast salary rules, you've got to make exceptions. And the rider exception right now is Charleston Hughes. Don't have him that defensive line. Look. Hey, interesting, by the way. I saw him on the weekend, Charleston Hughes. And one, he goes, how did Lynch know that I had a business in Regina? He told us right here. Uh, what do you mean, the show? Yeah, oh, but he does landscaping. He does various things. Yeah, he told me out here. Oh, or else he told me. He told you? Oh, uh, Carnival. Carnival restaurant. I saw him at the Carnival restaurant, and he told me that. <laughs> well, I said, listen, Lynch is part of the old boys club. I said, do the Calgary Stampeders have an old boys club? And Chucky's like, well, um, I don't think so. Since the Calgary Flames bought them, there's no old boys club around the Calgary Stampeders. I wouldn't know. You Calgarians tell me, is there? Because there certainly is here. As you know, John. Yep. And the Bombers probably have one. Oh, they do, sure, for sure. I would think. The CFL in general, what I hear, is an old boys club overall. Yep. Uh, I don't know as much about that, but I know about the Rough Riders old boys club. But your friends with the Stamps have been for a long time, at least that crew. Is there an old boys club in Calgary? There has to be. There's one everywhere. Well, they're not. There used to be, but it's deteriorated a bit because they're getting older, right? Eh? Kenny Noons is 89 years old. They don't talk to him anymore, but... Uh, 
they're getting older, and, um, you know, and a lot of them have died, quite frankly, as in Regina. Norm Fong writing, you know the great Fongo. Oh, great guy. He says, Rod, Hughes got 10,000, more than most CFL players got. What are we saying about that? I'm saying Scott Milanovic got 500,000. So some players got nothing. That doesn't make any of this any more right. I'm pointing out an observation, which incidentally, nobody would have really even known if Terry Jones hadn't reported this in the Edmonton Sun. What are we saying here? Are we saying that's just the way it is? Yep. And if that's the way that it is, I'm prepared to go along with that. That's the way that it is. I can accept that, but you might have a tough time putting your hand out to the government if this is the way things are. That's that's what I'm saying. Sorry. Fans will be very upset if they pay the same for their test season tickets, and the and they say and the players are getting less, the coach is still getting the big salaries. It'll be hard for them to take if they if they lose, and they fans want you to get your superstars back here. We've had a good team. And Charleston Hughes is the best defensive lineman in the league. Three times sacker. Four. Uh, four times sacker. Four years in a row he led the league in sacking. He's a difference maker. A type of guy you got to have. And this bothers me when sometimes teams don't see that. They're more interested in saving the money and going, oh, we saved the money, we saved the money. Well, we get somebody else. <laughs> you won't get somebody else. There aren't guys running around town, defensive ends in Regina, or Moose Jar, Kelly, or Edmonton, or Rollo. Uh, you got to grab a guy like him. He's a leader. He makes the big plays. And it will hurt the football club if he's not there. Well, they have a financial mandate. That's all. And they're not budging on it. So be prepared for Charleston Hughes to leave town. The question is, is somebody else willing to step up financially? I want to read the CFL report, Frenzy. Okay. We have a sponsor for it. I'm still not clear why I'm not allowed to say who it is. But that's okay. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders have signed American wide receiver Artavis Scott. The 26-year-old from Oldsmar, Florida, was an all-ACC receiver in all three of his seasons with the Clemson Tigers. He finished his college career with 245 receptions, the most in program history, and helped the Tigers to a U.S. College National Championship back in 2017. Scott signed with the Chargers as an undrafted free agent following the 2017 NFL draft and spent the better part of three seasons with the Chargers, primarily on the practice roster before moving to the Indianapolis Colts. And most recently, he was with the Houston Texans. The Ottawa Red Blacks have signed 2020 draft pick Treshawn Abrahams-Webster, as well as offensive lineman Brandon Hittner and linebacker Frankie Griffin. And the BC Lions have signed Canadian offensive lineman David Knevel to a contract extension. He was selected in the third round, 21st overall of the 2018 CFL draft after four years at the University of Nebraska. Tell me, please, who else in this land is doing a daily CFL report? Nobody else. Nobody. But and the teams are. are active. See that? The teams are active, folks. The teams are active, so they must believe and have been told that they're going to play this year. And they tell me they're going to play starting June the 10th. We'll just Greg Clevgard writes in. He says, Frenzy is exactly right. Don't encourage him. <laughs> <laughs> What's he right about, by the way? Because he's just machine gun 87 point. <laughs> What's he right about? <laughs> Uh, and Jack in Vulcan, Alberta, writes, that's the way it is, but that doesn't make it right. Unless it's made right, the CFL is going to struggle financially. we got to take a break and come back. But you see this chicken and egg, yep. catch 22. Well, it's the way that it is, Rod. Yep. Okay. And how's that working for you? Okay. We'll be right back with Viewer Takeover. You're watching a Flame Tech Football Friday right here on the RP Show on Game Plus Television, live daily on YouTube, and listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions is Saskatchewan's only full-service supply chain company. Strategic sourcing, PO creation, and order expediting, VMI and vending solutions, and free delivery are just a few of the supply chain services we provide. If your company needs it, Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions can get it for you. Price, quality, service, 
Rockstar Supply Chain Solution is helping Saskatchewan companies buy better. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Introducing Original 16 Hard Seltzer. The refreshing taste of delicious peach with vodka made in Saskatchewan. New Hard Seltzers from Original 16. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. An Original 16 to fit your active lifestyle. Introducing Original 16 Canadian Ultra Lager. Just 80 calories and 2.5% alcohol. Taste without compromise. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's Lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's Lifeline. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard, and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. Welcome back to the show, everybody. We have the Don Cherry of football with us here in the bunker, John Frenzy, and he's going to stay with us over into hour two. A couple comments here. J. Rod Livingstone says Tom Shepard and John Lynch are the old boys club leaders. It's a compliment for you there, Lynch. Oh, good old right here. This Rough Riders football team has an old boys club, and Lynch is a charter member of it. Wayne, <laughs> Wayne, Wayne, Rod. Wayne in Victoria says, I don't agree with paying coaches, but not paying players. It's not fair. But also the league can't survive or thrive financially doing that. Jeff Kabilis in Weyburn says, I just saw somewhere that the Habs have more shorthanded goals than 14 teams have power play goals. The Habs are hot. Yeah, they are. And yeah. Greg Clevgard says, Frenzy reminds me of Gramps. Love the stories he tells. I bet you're a very popular uh, grandpa, aren't you, Lynch? I, I certainly am. I think he worked for me, but his name was Kevin then when he worked for me. Oh, you changed his name? I don't know if it's the same guy or not. He's a great guy. The, uh, is it your grandson or granddaughter's boyfriend that watches my Instagram story and loves you every Friday when you come out of your house? Is it Who is it that loves... My daughter, granddaughter's boyfriend. Boyfriend, yep. Right. It was quarterback for the uh, Thunder. Yeah. Every morning, if you, uh, every Friday morning, if you watch my Instagram at Rod Peterson Official, you'll see me picking up Lynch, and the soundtrack is hot. Is it ever? Some great costumes to come to in the future. By the way, <laughs> Sean McCormick from Game Plus 
answering viewers' questions here on that aforementioned Instagram page. People are asking if the Rod Peterson Show is available on Game Plus on Bell TV. And Sean has answered, Game Plus is available on Bell and also going into a free preview starting February 1st for Bell subscribers. So for all of those that have Bell Satellite, the Game Plus Network is available and beginning February 1st, which is Monday, a free preview. Ooh. Things are all great around here. That's going to be fantastic, man. From fantastic. viewer William May, if that is your real name, he says, a report out saying in 2018, the CFL had $210 million in their account. If true or not, who knows? Well, where's the report, please? Tell me where it is. Like, that means nothing to me. You could have picked that up at Tim Hortons this morning. Anyways, next hour, more with Frenzy. Reggie Begleton of the Green Bay Packers. Martavis Bryant of the Toronto Argonauts. And thanks to Tori Gurley this hour. Stick with us through the break. We're going to Game Plus in Hour 2 for the final time. It's only a one-hour show today, everybody. I had this day. Now I'm Cindy Lauper and the prick. <laughs> That's where the money is. So I punched him. Of course you did. I got balls. Bronco Plumbing and Heating, proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade-In Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program, or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 Ford F-150 Explorer or 2020 Ford Escape and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of thoroughly inspected pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. Look like the pros. Shop Ultimate Fan Zone. NHL, NFL, MLB, CFL, NBA, and more. We have something for every sports fan. Autograph jerseys, prints, jersey stitching, custom framing, and collectibles. UFZ is your one-stop sports store offering fans official team gear. Check out Saskatchewan's Man Cave Corner on River and Main, downtown Moose Jaw, or visit us online at ultimatefanzone.ca. Built by fans for the fans. Direct West has been the bridge for me from not dealing with social media or digital presence to having a presence. You have to take the leap of faith, so to say. And I'm glad we have. Direct West has helped us out immensely to get our presence online as far as digitally and also with the social media page. To see the results is just, uh, just puts a smile on your face. <laughs> hey, it's Warren Dean. I understand more than anyone how changing weather affects your day, and that's no different for your vehicle. That's why I look to the experts at Suds Full Service Car Wash. They have a wide range of exterior washes, including Lava Shield with Towel Dry. Looking good, Natalie and Kirby. And don't forget their famous Suds Ultimate. Thoroughly cleans the interior of your car. Open Monday to Saturday, no appointment necessary. Head to Suds Full Service Car Wash today, where they treat you like family. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rental. Video. Video production. Event. Event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. No! You all didn't know the old me. 
that for 40 years, Darren, I was a kamikaze. The fact that I'm alive is a miracle. How about that? I've ridden steers, jumped off cliffs, been shot and been shot at, and I survived it all. This is the Rod Peterson Show. I know riding steers isn't that dangerous, but most people still haven't done it. Welcome to the RP Show, everybody. It's a Flame Tech Football Friday, and that means you're in luck. Hall of Fame Rough Riders broadcaster John Frenzy's in the bunker, the Don Cherry of football. Ready to have some fun, Lynch? Sure, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. This is an historic day. It's our last day on Game Plus TV that it's only one hour. Mm-hmm. Because come Monday, it's two hours live beginning at noon Eastern here on the RP Show on Game Plus. And as Sean McCormick from Game Plus informing us on Instagram today, answering viewers' questions, Game Plus Network is now available on Bell and also going into a free preview starting February 1st for Bell subscribers. So we continue to infect people's minds wow. all over Canada. That's great. More and more. Yes, it is great. That's great. More and more every day. This hour is going to be fantastic. We've got Green Bay Packers wide receiver Reggie Begleton, he of Calgary Stampeders fame, and Martavis Bryant, the newest member of the Toronto Argonauts who's got a colorful NFL history. He'll be joining us from the West Coast to talk about that and why he chose the Canadian Football League. That's all coming up this hour. Let's jump into the quick six show topics, please, Jordan. (laughs) Enough dilly-dallying around. We got to get right into business here. Number one, Super Bowl 55. I've got some news here about that that I'm going to get to coming up in the sports update. The Money line, the point spread has not changed. The Kansas City Chiefs are still favored by 3.5 at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa one week from Sunday. But I'm not going with that. I'm taking Tampa Bay by seven points. Brady's Bucks are going to do it at home. Lynch, I have not asked you yet your take on Super Bowl 55 and the matchup. How do you think this unfolds? Do you seem like a Kansas City guy to me? Yeah, I am a Kansas City guy. You got to be realistic about it. There you have our super team. We just talked about it with uh, Tory that they got four superstars from another league. Tahomas, uh, the linebacker, the receiver, Travis Kelsey, Travis and, Kelsey, receiver, yeah. six five two sixty five, runs like a deer, runs over people. He's mean. Uh, and then talk about Tyrone Hill. What's he? Four Tyreek Hill. Yes. Tyreek Hill. What's he? Four two speed. Uh, the four two for the forty. I mean, you can't catch him. How could you have four superstars like that? On one team at this one time. But it's the Super Bowl, and Tampa Bay is good, too. And it sucks when the other team tries. I'm betting you lunch, Lynch. Officially, today, we're betting lunch at Ballers. What do you say? Um, That's great. Okay. Last time we were there, you had the taco salad, and you loved loved it. it. Loved it. Fantastic. Moving on to point two. Other NFL news. And I wonder if when we get into next week, and it's actual Super Bowl week, if we won't be hearing about the Deshaun Watson story. Like in the CFL. When it's Grey Cup week, other teams are barred from making any announcements that don't pertain to Grey Cup week. Yep. Is it? Does the NFL have that rule? I think they do. I, th- I think they do, too. But Tom Brady last year completely stole the headlines, if you recall, yep. basically announcing that he wasn't going back to New England. Yep. And lo and behold, he's in the Super Bowl again. But anyways, the number one question today in the National Football League is where does Deshaun Watson land? And what an interesting story. The quarterback of the Houston Texans wants out. They fired the coach and GM that he didn't like, Bill O'Brien. They got a new head coach, Cully, hired him yesterday, and Deshaun Watson still wants out because he doesn't believe in the direction of the team. And we can go down this road and predict where he may go, but my mind went to Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers because oh, you think don't he's say not one. Do you think he's not wondering don't about the that. direction of the team? Listen, if the Eskimos of the Oilers, if the Oilers ever got rid of him, shut the face down. Shut the place down. I mean, he is a team. He's fantastic. I can't believe there. In my common sense thinking, there isn't some way you got two stars like him, uh, him and his centerman, and they're both the, not only the top players in the league. They are the top players, one and two in scoring last year. Almost the same this year. I don't believe they can't work out some combination to get them going good and two other lines. Well, there. they can't, and they lost again to the orders last night, so we're, ju- we're getting off script, and that's my fault. It's my fault, but I'm going to pick Deshaun Watson to Jacksonville because he's going somewhere. I'm saying, uh, hey, I want to say Indianapolis. 
And you're saying the Colts because they need a quarterback yeah, too. Sure do. Wow. He'd be great. He would be great in, in, in Indianapolis. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. Point three, because I want to spend a little more time on this. It is a Flame Tech Football Friday, so we got to talk football. More of it. The Edmonton football team is looking for a head coach. Just five days ago, Scott Milanovic stepped down as head coach to go to the Colts as quarterback's coach. And now the race is on, the sweepstakes, to be the next head coach in Edmonton. I'm wondering, are they going to hire somebody right away? Are they going to wait? They say they don't. Wait. Can I finish? What? Are they going to burn more money? Because we don't know if they're going to play this year or not. And who's it going to be? The top four candidates seem to be... I don't know if this is true. This is what 3 downnationcom has. Jamie Elizondo, who's believed to be the leader. Yeah. Uh, who else? Mark Tressman. Do they have Tressman in there? For sure they had Chris Jones. Yeah. Who are the other ones? Our poll was Elizondo, Chris Jones, Mark Tressman, Noel Thorpe, the current defensive yeah. coordinator. The trail's kind of gone cold. As you notice, nobody's talking about it. I will say it's Jamie Elizondo will be the guy. As much as I'd like to see Chris Jones back in the league with Edmonton, I think it'll be Jamie Elizondo. But what's what's your football peep saying? Um, well, what I'm saying is Chris Jones. Uh, why wouldn't you take him back? He, you know, he won in Edmonton. He's a winner. He knows the league inside out. He knows the players. Several players in that team are there are, are still there that he got to come when he was there. He's only been gone for three years. So uh, I. I think it's a natural in this situation. It'd be a great choice because you know Chris Jones is a winner. Elizondo, yeah, I know he's a great choice, nice guy, never been a head coach. Noel Thorpe, never been a head coach. Everybody loves him, said he's going to be the next head coach. They've been saying that about Noel Thorpe for probably the last five years, and he's a great guy, very defensive-oriented, and has never been chosen to be a head coach, always a runner-up, always a bridesmaid. Uh, Better to be a bridesmaid than a flower girl, I know that, but still... uh, I'm going with, with Chris Jones. Wow. I like it. Well, there may be too much pressure on the general manager of Edmonton, Brock Sunderland, to hire Chris Jones. So we'll see. Rose Henry, viewer in Edmonton, says, regarding the coaches getting paid versus the players, the coach was still working his butt off, and the players were only working out. Yeesh. She's uh, come out in defense of the coaches. I don't know. I've talked to some coaches who say, they weren't doing anything all year. Hey, there's but. one from Jeff Stamps. How about that? How about New England for Watson? We haven't mentioned that. What? New England for Watson. I wonder if uh, Belichick, will go, or Bel- Belichick will go after him because he's not going to have Cam Newton back there next year. And Jim, Jimmy Stidham, the yep. kid from uh, Jared Auburn, Stidham. Jared Stidham, the kid from Auburn, isn't going to do it right away. Or maybe never. I think never. So that would be a great thing. A Bob Crafter, if you could pull that in, that get the fans back. We got a lot of things to get to, so I'm moving on. Point four, Thursday NHL leftovers. Most mornings I tweet my NHL thoughts from the night before, and this is what they were today from last night's 13 games in the National Hockey League. Number one, how long will the Leafs be number one overall in the entire NHL? Two weeks. I I applaud them. Two weeks. There's a lot of pressure on the Toronto Maple Leafs each and every year, and right now they're seven and two. I say keep running with it. They got a long ways to go, but for now they look good. Point two, the Capitals are winning without Ovi. How about that? Yeah. I looked at the score sheet last night for their 6-3 win over the Islanders. I'm looking for Ovi's points. I'm like, whoa, he's not playing. I forgot. I think he's had a four-game COVID suspension. So good on the Caps. Yeah. I'm trying to be positive today. Yeah. Yeah. Point three, when does Calgary become concerned? The Flames have lost three in a row. But they're, they've played, well, three very good teams, Toronto twice and Montreal. I don't think they should be overly concerned yet. They're but I picked sure. them to be number one in Canada. So don't make me look like a fool, Calgary. Do the right thing and start winning. Point four, the Kachuk brothers, I put equals the Hart brothers. Like <laughs> Owen and Bret Hart, <laughs> Ma- Matthew and Brady Kachuk. They like to fight. Both served fighting majors last night. I don't understand why. <laughs> uh, point five, the Oilers slipped out of a playoff spot. But it's only week two. Hashtag let's go Oilers. But the Oilers have been probably the NHL's biggest disappointment so far this season. But Dave Tippett, your buddy. Yeah. I thought he could do it. He did a good job in Dallas. I thought if anybody can turn him around, it's him and Kenny Holland together. But it doesn't seem to make any difference who they put in the ice or in the coaching jobs or in the executive positions. They're still mediocre. Very, very mysterious, you know. It, it really certainly is. looks that way. Yeah. I, don't, I don't understand it. 
Although they often say, why do some teams always win and some teams always lose? Oh, yeah, but this Starts is the Oilers. at the top. Oilers. Can George. I, John? Go ahead. It starts at the top, and with the Oilers, what's changed? What's not changed? Ownership. Anyways, moving on to point five. The Western Hockey League's return to play was announced in the province of Alberta on Thursday. And bravo to Alberta. The five teams are going to start playing. That's uh, Edmonton Oil Kings, Red Deer Rebels, Calgary Hitmen, Lethbridge Hurricanes, Medicine Hat Tigers, beginning February 26. And now the rest of us wait for the news with our provinces. Hearing a lot of things at this point, it's a highly delicate political football. I don't want to say anything because I don't want to muddle it all up. So good luck and bravo, Alberta. Point six, we announced yesterday that we are beginning February 6th going to Access Now Television all across the province of Saskatchewan, 80 communities. We're very excited about that. Saturdays and Sundays at noon, it will air on Access Now TV in HD. So those are the quick six show topics. And there's we, we didn't have a poll question, but I'm going to put it out now. For Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center, and it's a simple one. Will the Saskatchewan Rough Riders sign Charleston Hughes? This is a big deal. This has CFL-wide ramifications. This, oh, you already put it up, Clark? Good job. 55% on Facebook saying, yes, they will. And we may just leave this. Well, it's shifting. It's shifting. Will thank Charleston you, Hughes re-sign with the Rough Riders? 24 hours to vote on that poll. And we're going to move that into the face-off today as well for the ultimate fan zone in Moose Jaw and the Mad Greek restaurant. And let's start with Lynch and let's see what he has to say. We all know where you stand on the Riders re-signing Charleston Hughes. You want them to get off their wallets and sign him because he's led the CFL in rushing each of the last four years. But Sack. will they? What did I say? Rushing. Uh, Sack, sorry, led the CFL in yes, rushing. Yes, they will sign him because they don't want to hear me talking. Uh, <laughs> they will sign him probably Thursday or Friday of this week. Oh, you're getting fancy. You're saying yes, and you're picking the day. Yep. No, 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 no. See, what a perfect face-off. Great, great idea, Clark, to face off on this, because I don't think, as it stands now, I don't think that they'll sign him because the Rough Riders aren't coming off their budget. That's clear. Charleston Hughes said that. It was in the newspaper this week. They can't afford not to. If they do, it's hail Columbia. Not Columbus, Columbia. Lynch, you're getting weird on me. Well, I'm not getting weird. I'm you're getting weird on I'm me. I'm calling it like it is. So, Charleston Hughes is going to at least go to free agency. He's said that. He wants to see what else he can get. It opens mid-February, and we'll see if somebody else is willing to pay more than what the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are offering. So, frankly, I'm saying no. John Lynch is saying yes. Charleston Hughes will sign with the Rough Riders, and the Riders will write the check to get him. They paid 250000 last year for the guy beside him, Johnson. Cam Johnson, remember him? Micah Johnson. Micah Johnson. You remember what a success he wasn't? He was here for a holiday, it turned out. But uh, the Riders will put out big money for a good lineman. You don't think that Charleston Hughes isn't worth 250000 I guess so. Of course he is. Well, he yeah. only got 180000 last year. So anyways, moving on. That is the face-off for the... Uh, Ultimate Fan Zone in Moose Jaw. UFZ is your one-stop shop for the sports fans on your list. Memorabilia, collectibles, licensed team apparel, and more. Visit the Man Cave downtown Moose Jaw or find them on Facebook and Instagram at Ultimate Fan Zone Moose Jaw. And for the Mad Greek restaurant in Moose Jaw, available for licensed dining, takeout, or delivery, head to themadgreekeatery.com for more information. You guys let me know when we can go to a break because we've got Reggie Bagleton connected. And ready to come on, Green Bay Packers wide receiver. I should mention we do have the CFL report coming up as well as the sports update and viewer takeover. Jeff, the Stamps fan from Calgary, chimes in. He says, if I was the Riders, I would say it's time to go in a younger direction on defense. Mind your own business, Jeff. You're a Stampeders <laughs> fan. See, he's just trying to cause problems, but that's what he does. Uh, Pat in Saskatoon says, you have to sign Cam Judge or, or Charleston Hughes, at least one of them. Oh, they lose both of them. <laughs> Goodbye. And J Judge is a Canadian. Very important. Very important. Starting Canadian. He's a great football player. 
Both those two guys are great football players. We don't want – maybe – what are we saying? We don't really need great football players. They cost too much. We'll get <laughs> nice, cheap guys that you guys will love. Maybe we won't win many games, but what the hell? Eh? Well, I'll tell you what. Speaking of tremendous football players who made it, Reggie Begleton is lined up and ready to join us next. The Beaumont, Texas product, former Calgary Stampeder for three seasons now of the National Football League, will join us after this break. Keep the comments coming in, you Stampeders fans. I want to hear from you. Packers fans, too. Reggie is your witness Next, this has been the warm-up for the Four Seasons Sports Palace. Come in and warm up at the Four Seasons. You're home for the NFL. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus Television Network. Live daily on YouTube and listen live at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Introducing Original 16 Hard Seltzer. The refreshing taste of delicious peach with vodka made in Saskatchewan. New Hard Seltzers from Original 16. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. While the world seems to be facing one challenge after another, our focus at FlameTech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop, staffed by PGA of Canada professionals, is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tea time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. He's covering everything that matters to you. It's the Rod Peterson Show. Tune in live Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to noon, to catch the show live and be a part of the action. Take control by commenting live and sharing the show with your friends. Welcome back, everybody. We've got uh, breaking news from the Canadian Football League. This from the Montreal Alouettes today. 
I'm reading via news release. It is with great pride that the Alouettes organization announced on Friday that Anthony Calvillo is back in the nest in the position of team ambassador. Calvillo arrived in Montreal in 1998 as he joined the Alouettes following stops in Las Vegas and Hamilton, which marked the beginning of a love affair with Quebecers. He'll remain a member of the Université de montreal Canada coaching staff on top of his new role with the Alouettes. Well, that's a great so, plus for the Good SPFL. news there. Great for the CFL, great for Montreal. I asked the Stampeders fans to get their questions and comments ready, and they have obliged. Uh, the Prairie Mobile text line is open for those as well, 306-840-8777. 840-8777. Prairie Mobile is your authorized SAS Town Mobility Center. And uh, let's bring him in. From Green Bay, Wisconsin, the cheese capital of the world, Reggie Bagleton of the Packers joining us today. Stampeders, great. How you doing, Reggie? I'm doing well. Uh, thank you for having me. It's an honor. Yo, you bet. An honor for us, too, man. I want to say congratulations on the new futures deal with the Green Bay Packers and what was a pretty successful 2020 for the football club and yourself. And for those that don't know, Reggie went off 1,444 yards with the Calgary Stampeders in 2019. Is that the thing, Reggie, that was a springboard to the NFL for you looking back? Uh, yes, it was. Uh, it allowed me to get my name in the door. Uh, after that, it was uh, it was the workouts that I was presented, and luckily, uh, thankfully, that you know the Packers saw something in me and, and gave me a chance. We got a comment here from Jack Fulton. You know Jack. Reggie Bagleton is the most focused, dedicated, determined player I've known in the last 12 years. This young man has the physical ability to be a starter in Green Bay and has the character to keep him there. And if you have the Jack Fulton stamp of approval, you got mine, Reggie. Um, you, you just talk about your association with Jack and the Stampeders and how that prepared you for the role that you're in right now. Jack is one of those guys that he, he, he kind of sat behind, you know, behind the lines uh, and observed. But if you if you ever needed to go have someone to go talk to, he was always there. Uh, Jack is a wonderful guy. Uh, he is going to forever be my friend. Uh, yeah, Mr. Jack, he's one of those guys that, that believed in me. And he, he, he's one of the main reasons that I propelled the way I did as well. Yeah, I appreciate uh, Jack's support of us. So how did the Calgary Stampeders in your three seasons there? three tremendous seasons, by the way, prepare you for the National Football League? Uh, one thing Calgary uh, helped me with was uh, practicing a lot of discipline. Um, you know, coming in there my rookie year, uh, I didn't believe that I was going to get the opportunity to start because, you know, you have the veterans in front of you. And uh, and, and I, I looked at it as paying my dues. Uh, I took advantage of that. Uh, I observed. I, I took pointers. Uh I uh, developed a uh, camaraderie with them, and, and they weren't afraid to actually show me the ropes. And, and that's one of the things I loved about Calgary. Uh, KJ is one of one of the biggest guys that that also helped me get to where I am today. He he wasn't one of those selfish vets that wouldn't wouldn't let you uh, you know know the secrets of the game. He he actually presented it to me, and and he's one of those guys that cared about winning just in case something happened because this is the sport of football, and injuries do happen. And, um, you know, I was blessed with that. Unfortunately for him, I, w I was blessed after he got hurt with the opportunity to go. But he was one of the main reasons why I was prepared as well. Reggie, John Lynch here. Uh, who is your quarterback coach now that you report to for the most part? Uh, quarterback's coach? Receiver's yeah. coach. Yeah, receiver's coach. Uh, the receiver's coach is uh, Brabel. Uh, his name is Jason Brabel. Uh, he's a really good guy. Um he knows the system, and if if I ever needed questions, uh, he knows exactly what to do. Um, he, he's one of the main reasons why I was prepared here in Green Bay because he knew the playbook in and out, and he, and I and I shadowed it. And I was one of those guys that were hungry and, and and wanted to to know everything, and he offered it. Reggie, when you talked about the time learning the ropes with the stamps on the practice roster, is that the exact same situation you find yourself in now in Green Bay? Is it mirror? the Calgary situation that way? It's, it's eerie similar. Uh, it's, it's been similar the same way when I was in college as well because I was a walk-on for, uh, for two years and I had to, you know, kind of shadow behind guys then. Uh, so it's, it's, it's nothing new to me. And the biggest thing uh, that I, I can honestly say that 
will get you over that hump is if you stay disciplined, you stay patient, and you have faith uh, that everything is going to work out. And honestly, you just come, you, you put your boots on, and you go to work every day. And that's, that's just one of those things you have to do. You can't worry about what, what's going to happen uh, later on. You can only control the controllables, and that's that's the main thing that that I've learned to do over the years. We have some questions from some viewers, if you don't mind, Reggie. One is from Rhett Hastings. He says, Reggie, what are some main keys to success for a young football player entering the next level of university slash junior football? I think you just gave some of them, but even more so. Uh, you, you just talked about attitude, but is there some physical things they can do too? Uh, the physical is, is only the, the, uh, the second part of this. Uh, I mean, all football players, if, if you get to a certain level, that means you can play. Uh, the, the biggest thing is the, is the mindset, it's the, it's the mental aspect of part of this game because you could get derailed by so many things. And uh, if you could control your thoughts and, and the way you go about things and try to, try to turn every negative situation into a, a positive situation, then you, you could go pretty far. You, you won't let things bother you so much. Uh, you won't start looking in the past. You won't start looking in the future too much. You'll, you'll, you'll look in the present, and you'll control what you can control. So uh, one of my biggest things I would say is find your idol. Don't be afraid to uh, ask for help. Uh, find somebody who, is, who, who has made it and you believe uh, is similar, your game is similar to. Uh, shadow that guy. If you're able to ask questions, ask those questions, ask those hard questions. Uh, we actually like that. Uh, as, as an elite player, we like when a guy under us is, is, is curious because it shows how hungry he is and we're willing to, to, to give him those tidbits because we won't be able to play this game forever. So it's like, you know, passing it down to the next generation. Blue Bombers linebacker Micah always watching and writes 100% true. Great competitor. Great player. You remember Micah from his time, probably with the BC Lions when you were up here, a fierce, hard-hitting coverage linebacker uh, in the CFL. He's awesome. Uh, Craig Campbell in Toronto says, glad all continues to go well with your career, Reggie. What have you play, who, who have you played with and against in the CFL that you feel should also be playing in the NFL? There, there are a lot of guys up there. Every, everybody asks me, like, how is the CFL? And – one of the main things I, I say is that it's one of the most fun fun times I've ever had in my life uh, playing up there in, in Canada. It's, it's, it's the players. The players are are, are absolutely good, uh, and the fans are great as well. Um, you know, coming from Texas, uh, Texas football is, a, is, a, is pretty much a religion down there, and naturally we have that uh, – that arrogant swag when we come to football. So when, when I didn't even know about the CFL growing up, uh, not even going to going to lie to you, uh, coming out of coming out of college, I was like, ah, I'm, I don't I don't really want to go up there and deal with the cold and uh, you know put my body for uh, at risk for pennies. Well, you know this is my thinking at the time. This is my negative thinking at the time. Um, but going up there was one of the, the best things that that could have ever happened to me, and. Uh, it changed. It changed me mentally. It changed. It allowed me to mature so much. You know, being up there across the border, and uh, specifically players. I, I I really can't at this moment, you know, point out who exactly. But I know for a fact there are a lot of ballers up there that can ball down here. How about Bo Levi Mitchell? Bo Bo has the uh, the mental capacity. He has the talent. He he could play down here if he gets a shot. There you go. From Ricky Kazama, Reggie, what does your game face paint, game face paint, have a specific meaning? Uh, I usually do the two crosses from all the way to my eye, all the way down. It's almost like a crying cross. Uh, honestly, it's just it's 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 protection for me. Uh, I'm not afraid to um, uh, to express my faith, um, and it it really doesn't have a you know, alter, uh, alternative, uh, uh, meaning to besides, you know, I'm going out there for protection and, that, and that's my protection. Awesome. Well, that has worked so far. You're not, you're not changing now. All right, Lynch, you've had your hand in the air for a while. What else do you have here for Reggie Begleton? What about the Stampeders today now after that, or the Packers today after that 
disappointing loss at home last weekend. Uh, everybody on a high still, or did it bring everybody to the floor? Or just what's the attitude? Well, I mean, immediately after that game, uh, y- you could tell that the aura around the room was that wasn't supposed to happen. And, you know, this is the sport. If somebody has to lose, uh, it's, you know, you can go out there and say it's a 50-50 chance. But uh, we, we know for a fact as a team that we were not, we was not supposed to lose that game. I mean, if you if you sit back and you didn't even watch the game and you seen the stats, you, you would think we had blown them out. Uh, but our mind our mindset was, you know, getting to the Super Bowl and you know getting Aaron another ring and and, the, and those guys that's in that locker room. We had a very 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 special team last year. I mean, this past season, and honestly, those guys we would never be able to get those same guys in the room together again. And that's the that's the part that hurts the worst. Uh, is that how special that team was, and we, we would never get that back. From a viewer, Chaz Barnes says, keep working and inspiring many others, Reggie. So uh, I'm sure the comments like that never do get old. So what is your status? You just signed a new deal. What, what, what's Reggie Bagleton's status with the Green Bay Packers for 2021? As of right now, I've signed a future, uh, meaning that I'll be able to go in camp and fight for a, uh, a, fi- a spot on a 53-man roster. Uh, it's a foot in the door, and it's a it's an opportunity for me to to blast through it. And I'm going to go in this offseason, give it everything I got, and I'm, I'm really going to try to make that 53-man roster because I know I can play in this league, and uh, I know there's a lot of people that want to see me be able to play in this league. Um, I'm going to continue to inspire, inspire people uh, that has came from practically nothing and had to work their way up. Way up. Uh, and, and, and that's one of my biggest goals. Someone had written in earlier, it, it slipped off the screen, it's gone now, but they asked, what is the biggest difference from CFL to NFL? For a guy like you, what was, I mean, you're just going back to American ball, but what was the big difference that you noticed when you signed with the Packers last year? You know, I thought the same thing. Uh, everybody asked me, like, uh, are you are you ready for that for that game back down there? And I'm like, you know, I played all my life. I played American football all my life. I should, it should be like riding a bike, right? But I actually planned in the CL for three years. I actually lost a little bit of my uh, my my wiggle a little bit, as I, as I could say, because one thing about the NFL is, uh, I mean, everybody knows it's a smaller field, but at the same time. Uh, Everybody, everybody on that field is fast. <laughs> it is fast. And when I say fast, I mean four or five less, and then you got a lot of people running way faster than that. So it's it's, it's all about reaction. It's, it's not about reaction. It's not about, let's say, for my example, if I catch the ball, I won't have time to actually turn around and observe the defense and see where I'm going there. It has to, it, it has to be quick. And uh, – and that's one of the main things that I'm going to uh, go in this off season, you know, uh, trying to trying to get back is that that sudden reaction again. Awesome, yeah, for sure. That they saw what they saw in you, and they're bringing you back. And I see that you got into the Week Four game, the win over the Falcons. Uh, here come the Stams fans. Michael Fall writes, Reggie, were you watching how well Alex Singleton has played? Absolutely, Alex. I keep up with Alex all the time. Uh, he, he's a guy that I look up to. Uh, he's he's uh, he's disciplined in what he does. Uh, he has a story, just like many of us do, uh, and he plays for something, and that and that's one of the uh, most inspiring things about him. Um, and I, I I didn't get the opportunity to actually be on the on the field with him at the same time, but uh, it. it I got a feeling it would have been a good game if I was. <laughs> okay, and the last one uh, from producer Clark here. He says, Tory Gurley, who's played with Aaron Rodgers, he's our NFL insider, said Aaron has the strongest arm he's caught. Did Reggie have a welcome to the moment, welcome to the NFL moment at all with Aaron Rodgers or anybody else this past season? Um... Would you be able to elaborate uh, exactly? Just one. Did you, you did you that? catch a pass from Aaron? Was it walking into Lambeau Field? Was it walking past a statue of Vince Lombardi that you went, "Dang, I'm here." It 
it, it was all that. The, the, the <laughs> second I walked into the building, you you can you can feel the history behind you know this organization. Uh, the uh, the field house, you know, everything is is built into Lambo pretty much. And uh, the first time I seen you know Devonte Adams, Aaron Rodgers, just these big big name people. I'm you know I, I'm not gonna lie, I, I I dropped my jaw for a second, and then I realized you know what I'm here for business. I'm here for business, and and this is gonna be my teammate. So. You know, it's time to get past that point. It was short lived, but once we got in, once we got to work, it was, it was like you know, uh, going to the candy store. Awesome. Well, good for you, Reggie. We didn't meet until today, but I just, for what it's worth, I want to say, uh, proud of you, and can't wait to see what's next in 2021. Getting down to the 53 and staying on there, and I appreciate uh, the time. All the best, uh, my friend. Thanks uh, for this today. Thank you. Reggie Bagleton of the Green Bay Packers joining us here on this Flame Tech Football Friday. They're telling me that our next guest has logged in and is ready to go. NFL veteran and the newest member of the Toronto Argonauts, Martavis Bryant, joins us next. We'll be right back. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus Television, live daily on YouTube, and listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Direct West provides us with stats and analytics, and, and it's amazing for us to look and see that, you know, each year we're 10 to 20 percent higher on our Google Leads. It's great to see the success that our, our locations are having. The Direct West app gives us an opportunity to be in one place for people to find uh, any of our locations or our commodities. Without Direct West, we would have to be in multiple digital places. I would recommend Direct West. They're great to work with. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. This right here is time well spent. Why not pour yourself a smooth Saskatchewan made original 16? Warm up to the opportunity to seize the day. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or the donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. An Original 16 to fit your active lifestyle. Introducing Original 16 Canadian Ultra Lager. Just 80 calories and 2.5% alcohol. Taste without compromise. Bronco Plumbing and Heating, proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade and Program, or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306 781 2090. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. 
Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at DDG Regina. Laid back and kicking it, let's head back to the studio. Here's Rob. All right, welcome back, everybody, to a Flame Tech Football Friday here on the old RP Show. Coast to coast in all 10 provinces and 31 states on Game Plus TV. Darren DuPont joining us for the first time. I'm back. Hey, Moose. I'm back. You're back. Okay, well, we're going to jump right into this because our next guest is ready. They're telling me he's been logged in for some time from the West Coast, Martavis Bryan. Well, Clark's telling me that he might have lost the audio. So hang on as we, well, that'll give me a minute to go through the career of one Martavis Bryant. Clark says that he can't hear us. The Argos have changed their Twitter uh, account <laughs> name to, yes, that Martavis Bryant. He's a big name. White Tiger. In the National Football League's played 44 games, amassed 2,183 yards, 17 touchdowns. And was it this week or last that the Argos signed up? Time's flying. Yeah, I know. I think it was last. Uh, late last week? Late last week. So we've been working on this for a week to get Martavis Bryant here on the RP show on a Flame Tech Football Friday. So what's happening, Clark? So he's, ah, I just got the famous four words. We're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did it on purpose. Okay. Well, while you do that, you tell me when he's ready. And we'll bring him on. I'll jump into a sports update here. Former Winnipeg Jets forward Jack Roslovich made his Columbus Blue Jackets debut last night in a 3-2 shootout win against the host Florida Panthers. And it's a quick turnaround for the Jackets who face the Chicago Blackhawks tonight at home in the only NHL game. The Raptors will try to get back in the win column tonight when they host the Sacramento Kings in one of 10 NBA games. Sacramento has won two straight, but still sits 13th in the West at 7-10. and 10. Toronto fell to 7-11 and 11 with its loss to the Bucks on Wednesday. Considered the Super Bowl of extreme snow sports, X Games Aspen starts tonight and runs until Sunday. Unfortunately, missing Mark McMorris, the pride of Regina, who is COVID positive. I will pick this up in a moment because we got Martavis Bryant now. And Martavis, I appreciate the time. There he is. You got us now? Big yeah, dog? Thank you for having me. I can't hear you. Yes, <laughs> okay, good to have you, White Tiger. I appreciate I appreciate the patience getting through all that. So, hey, Great. man, big news coming to the Canadian Football League and the oldest team in pro football, the Toronto Argonauts. What's the last week mm -hmm. been like for you since uh, that announcement was made? Uh, it's been hit. A lot of phone calls, a lot of people calling me from different places I haven't talked to in so long, just trying to figure out what's my plan and what's going on. Can you tell me, please, what – went into it. I mean, the assistant GM there is a real good friend of mine, John Murphy. Pinball Clemens, mm -hmm. probably a better friend and a longtime friend of mine. I was excited for both parties here when I heard this. Mm -hmm. How did it happen? Uh, just me getting on the phone, talking to my agent and telling him I got a lot of ball left in me to play. And, uh, you know, I don't want to be done yet. So if it revolves me going to Canada to play football, then I'm all for it. I still want to play ball. So <clears throat> just tell, for those that don't know, I mean, the NFL fans know. I just read off your stats while we were bringing you on here. They're pretty whopping. 17 touchdowns in the league. How do you look back at the four seasons that you're on the field? Mm -hmm. Did you hit your full potential? Or do you think you still got a lot more to give? Got a lot more to give. I didn't reach my full potential when I was playing. It was only four years, and I was a young guy still playing, still learning. So I still got a lot left. Um, I ain't played in two years, of course, but I still been moving, still been active. The game of football still don't change. Yeah, having played since 2018 out of the league in 2019, 2020, are you the same Martavis Bryant? Have you changed? What's changed? Uh, talk about that a little bit. As far as my playing style and how I play the game of football, everything's still the same, but my mentality and how I carry myself off the field has tremendously changed. I'm more relaxed, more relaxed, more confident in myself and I know how to make better decisions off the field compared to when I used to. How did your conversations with the Argos go? You know, did they need some assurances, that kind of thing? Uh, they just wanted to know, make sure I was um, serious about the idea of coming to play, that it wasn't all games. And um, once they found out that I was serious about coming, everything was smooth. Outstanding. So what do you know about the Toronto Argonauts and the Canadian Football League? Uh, I got a couple teammates that I play with in, in Pittsburgh that plays on their team. So I don't really know too much about it, but they're going to sit down and teach me everything before, before I get there and start. So 
I'm not really worried. I'm just excited about the opportunity to get there and play with play with great teammates and be able to play the game I love again. Well, you talked about some teammates in Pittsburgh that played in the league. Um, mm-hmm. Who were they? Did you have even some college buddies that came to the CFL? Have you seen the games, by the way? I mean, you yeah, saw we just I had Reggie. Well, we just had Reggie Bagleton on, and he said, I'd never even heard of the CFL until he signed in it. So I'm just wondering mm-hmm. how much you do know about the CFL and if you think it, like I think it could suit your style of game even better than the small field in the NFL. I mean, have you had buddies play in the league, that kind of thing? What do you specifically know about it? Uh, I had a teammate, two teammates, Ronald Darby, Ronald Darby and Shakir uh, Richardson, who both played uh, with me in Pittsburgh, who plays on Toronto. So those guys, it's like I'm, I'm not going to be there by myself. I still have people there who I know and who I play American football with. So it's going to be a great experience for me, and they're going to teach me everything. They what, did those, do it. what did those guys tell you about uh, the Argos? Uh, that's a nice city. Um, great team, one of the best teams in the CFL. Um, you know the city gonna love me once I get there. Everybody's open arms. But we're just all excited for the opportunity to be able to play with each other again. Well, see, here's the interesting thing about Toronto. I mentioned there's the oldest team in pro football, which they are. They're my second favorite team. Uh, always have been. They love the NFL, right? They'll know who you are when you come to town, <laughs> and it's an incredibly yeah. talented receivers group there. But I would think. Like, people are going to buy tickets to come see you play, Martavis, but that's not new to you. You've been dealing with that your whole life. Correct. It's going to be a blessing. Uh, different from American football, so I'm going to bring some excitement to the city, and I just can't wait to get started. Are you looking at it? This is the obvious dumb question, but are you looking at it as a springboard to the National Football League? Like, what is what is your expectation of Toronto and the mm-hmm. CFL? I just want to enjoy my experience and play football for Toronto. As far as the league and all the other stuff, I'm not really worried about it. I don't even want to like go back into all of that. I'm just excited for the new start and whatever happens after that happens. You know, if I decide to go back to the league, so be it. If not, then I won't. Oh, That's good not on my mind right now. Well, then you got the absolute perfect <laughs> attitude going just to have fun. Hey, was there a point where it hadn't gotten fun over the last little while for you? Uh, only time football wasn't fun for me is when I was getting in trouble in the league. That's the only time it wasn't when it wasn't fun for me. When I had to sit there and watch it on TV, get suspended, hear my name in the newspapers, my mom being embarrassed. That's the only thing that really bothered me. Right, but when you step across the white line, all that's forgotten. All of it gone. Right. All of it forgotten. Calling in Ottawa. Ottawa, Ontario, which is your rival, by the way, the Ottawa Red Blacks. He says, Rod, tell Martavis that you only get three downs to make the 10 required yards for a first down. Also explain to him that you can move towards the line of scrimmage before the ball is snapped. You know all this stuff, right, Martavis? Correct. I don't know why they would want to give me a run. Why would you want to give me a run to start, though? <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, what is your 40 time? When's the last time you were clocked? I ran maybe two weeks ago. I was still running 4-3. My speed hasn't changed at all. I have no wear and tear on my body, so people need to understand I have no wear and tear on my body. Everything is still the same. All right, like right out, rolling right out of the factory. I like to hear it. So what's next between now and training camp with the Toronto Argonauts? Mark Davis, how are you going to occupy your time? And um, are they going to ship you a playbook, that kind of thing? Or what? Uh, what's up for you? Mm-hmm. I don't know about the playbook or anything. I just know me and Shaquille, we've been working out and training in L.A. I'm in L.A. right now, so we've been out here training um, every day. I'm going we'll to continue to do it till we get a report. I'm going to continue to take care of my body and be ready to go. As far as the playbook, you know, if they send it cool, if not, I learned it when I get there. It ain't going to take long, you know. Good for you. Well, I guess the last one is, were you surprised at how big a news it was when you signed with the Toronto Argonauts? It was huge news up here. I, was, I would think. I was, I was surprised. Why? I was definitely surprised how big Why? it was. Why? Mm, because people haven't heard about me playing ball in two years, so I don't know if I was still a relevant name or not. I really didn't care. I was just ready to go out and play ball again. All right. Well, we can't wait to get you on the field and get you into Canada, man. Thanks, and congratulations on that signing. Stay healthy more than anything because I know that's a COVID hotspot, and and you'll do all the right things. Congratulations, man, on doing the right things. Can't wait to see you play again. Thank you. Martavis Bryant of the Toronto Argonauts. Yes, that Martavis Bryant. He of 2,183 yards in the National Football League, 44 games and 17 touchdowns. As Clark and I were conferring in the break, he is the twin of Taj Smith. 
Yeah. He's a clone. Totally. Of a thousand yard receiver with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Martavis Bryant. I don't know about you. I'm a fan already. He it's gonna be fun. I love watching guys like that come in and he seems excited to play in the league. And uh, and that's good. He's, he's got the right attitude, right mindset. But it's you said it's a talented group in Toronto. So it'll be interesting, how, you know, how much he gets the ball. But uh, hey, he's going to make me tune in. We're going to take a break and come back with viewer takeover overtime. Hang on, you're watching the RP Show on Game Plus Television, YouTube Live, and listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at RodPeterson.com. Head to YouTube.com/slash The Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. Hey, it's Warren Dean. I understand more than anyone how changing weather affects your day, and that's no different for your vehicle. That's why I look to the experts at Suds Full Service Car Wash. They have a wide range of exterior washes, including Lava Shield with towel dry. Looking good, Natalie and Kirby. And don't forget their famous Suds Ultimate. Thoroughly cleans the interior of your car. Open Monday to Saturday, no appointment necessary. Head to Suds Full Service Car Wash today, where they treat you like family. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Introducing Original 16 Hard Seltzer. The refreshing taste of delicious peach with vodka made in Saskatchewan. New Hard Seltzers from Original 16. There's something for everyone at the Mad Greek Eatery. Delicious Greek dishes, pizza, lasagna, pastas, soups, salads, and much more. The Mad Greek Eatery brings the best authentic Greek cuisine right to you. Available for licensed dining, events, delivery, and takeout. For the best taste and huge portions, there is only one place. Visit the Mad Greek Eatery, downtown Moose Jaw. Call for takeout and delivery today. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rental. Video. Video production. Event, event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. Back on Game TV. We were conferring in the break, by the way, confirming there is a full moon. So if there's weird things going on in your life, that's why. Today, for us, it was John Frenzy. Did you hear in the middle of that interview with Martavis Bryant? The door flew open. Lynch came in and yelled, mask! 
He was watch, walking right onto the set. Thought he, did you find his mask? Uh, no, did not. Mask! But I gave him a new one. We have a box of uh, medical masks. masks okay. that, uh, yeah, but he had a rider mask. Clearly, he doesn't want to lose it. No, of course. And I don't, I don't know where it, that one is. But. A couple things we got to get to. One, you see over my shoulder here to the side of my laptop, that is the Kinsman Telemiracle 50-50 draw jackpot. I got to get into that, right? Yeah. Got to mention it. The ticket sales, the 50-50 is live now, and it's a Saskatchewan tradition. They've raised millions upon millions for disadvantaged groups, individuals, all through the Kinsman, raised through the Telemiracle, which is a telethon. This is the 45th year of it, but COVID causing more problems with it. So you can purchase your 50-50 tickets at telemiracle5050.ca right now. The uh, website is live. The lottery is live. It's one ticket for $20, five for $50, 20 tickets for $100, 100 for $250. So please help out uh, Kinsman Telemiracle in its 45th year. The winner will be announced on February 27th of this 50-50 jackpot. We were in the middle of the sports update when everything Hit the fan. Yes. So I'm just going to finish it, okay? Patrick Reed and Alex Noren share the lead after the first round of the Farmers Insurance Open. Reed and Noren open with 64s and enter the second round today at 8-under. Meanwhile, anyone visiting Tampa Bay's popular outdoor destinations for the Super Bowl will be required to wear a mask to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Tampa Mayor Jane Castor signed an executive order saying masks must be worn outside while downtown, in neighborhoods, and around Raymond James Stadium and in other tourist hotspots. If you don't, $500 fine. Whoa. This sports update for the Tap Brew House and drive through Liquor Store corner of Rochdale and Pasqua and for Ben Cahoon's G2G Protein Bars. Now with eight amazing flavors, RP Show viewers get 20% off with the promo code RP Show. Order yours now at g2gbars.ca. I was going to go through the CFL report, but if I did, it would be the second time today that I've read it. So we just we do have breaking news today out of the Canadian Football League. I'll just read that. The Alouettes announcing that Anthony Calvillo is coming back in the nest in the position of team ambassador. He originally arrived in Montreal in 98 after a stints with Las Vegas and Hamilton and led the Owls to eight Grey Cup games. Can you believe Amazing. that? Amazing. And to answer your question, he is staying on as the offensive coordinator of the Montreal Carabin, the university team, which when we last saw were in the national championship, right, against these guys at Laval. Yeah. Boy, I'm getting to a lot of stuff here. What's new with you? What do you got to say? <laughs> you haven't said much today. How are no, you? I'm sitting back enjoying Friday. Got lots to do this afternoon. I mean... I was sitting on Tuesday. I remember a Tuesday of this week. I'm like, the week's almost over, and it just it flies by. And so, I'm. Uh, I'm if just, anybody's deserved it, it's you. I'm doing my thing. Good. John O'Flynn, watching in North Vancouver, says, "Do you have to live in Saskatchewan to enter the Telemiracle 5050? You do. You have to be 19 and over. You don't have to live and, here. Well, I get somebody in Saskatchewan. You just have to, to buy physically be here. Yeah. yeah. So just you know." Ring up somebody you know in Saskatchewan. The My Sask 411 Business of the Week as we connect businesses to businesses and people to businesses in this wonderful province. It is the Teacher's Trunk. It is a Saskatoon store for teachers and parents interested in educational toys, games, and material to support children's learning. For those parents assisting their children with learning in these pandemic times, the Teacher's Trunk is an excellent source of educational types of material. The Teacher's Trunk is located 1028 Louise Avenue in Saskatoon. Business of the Week for my Sask 411 is the Teacher's Trunk. And a thank you to our great viewer, Ken Lega, and his wonderful partner, Irene, for helping us out on that. What are you getting up to on the weekend? No football to watch this weekend. No football. Um, we're going to be doing some some hockey for the SJHL, which That's will be right. fun, the video game. Um, they're Virtual gonna, hockey. They're going to do another sim. So just uh, going to be a lot of fun. We're going to go do that a little bit later today and tomorrow. And we'll be getting ready for Super Bowl week. I mean, we've got lots going on here next week. So it'll be an exciting weekend. The SJHL has just written in. We're excited to have you boys with us this weekend for the showcase. Anyone who wants to join us can view the stream at twitch.tv slash SJHL hockey. That's right. We'll be calling games today. You got all afternoon. You're doing it. I'm four o'clock today, two o'clock tomorrow for the SJHL, the virtual showcase. 
uh, the comments are coming in, but we got to roll. Next week, Jim Lang, Craig Smith, Tori Gurley, Charleston Hughes, Gus Ferrat, Warren Moon, and more. It's our Super Bowl week presented by Great Western Brewing Company. They're our title sponsors, so that's exciting. Yeah, very exciting. Thanks today to a very big uh, guest list. John Frenzy, Tori Gurley, Reggie Bagleton, Martavius Bryant. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe. We'll see you Monday at what? 12 Eastern. 12 Eastern. Here on Game Plus for the full two hours. Can't wait, everybody. Have a good weekend. Great job, Jordan, by the way. I love the job you did on that. 